and there was somebody else, and it's been it's been uh, it's been very busy in there. They it's been very busy, but they haven't produced much of consequence. Like I, I like try to keep up with the chat, and <laughs> it's pretty inconsequential. I don't even know who these people are. I would love for you guys to tell us who you are. Uh, but it was it, 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 it we when we started going off right. That's yeah. when the fireworks in the chat room started yeah. getting lively. You know, put yeah. a little energy into it. Yeah. You get a little energy back. See what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, working them up, and and now you're gonna do your bit, and I have a whole okay. long long another. I got a whole another rant coming. So stay so tuned. So we've got a modern Orthodox rabbi who's about the most left wing modern Orthodox rabbi in on the West Coast who has a synagogue. And uh, reminds he says that he stopped blessing God every morning for not having made me a woman. By the way, so it's when uh, Jews, Jewish men, get up in the morning, they have to say a series of blessings, and one of them is "Thank you, God, for not making me a Gentile," and another one is "Thank you, God, for not making me a woman." So obviously, this doesn't sound good in uh, today's uh, environment, but uh, it's been a blessing for at least two thousand years. In the Jews have been saying. So anyway, some in the left-wing modern Orthodox have stopped saying this blessing. For instance, Joe Lieberman, when he was running for Vice President of the United States, <laughs> he said that he doesn't say this blessing anymore. Okay, great. Yeah, okay. So uh, <laughs> Because he wanted the women vote or something? <laughs> the rabbi says, women have come a long way in Orthodox Judaism over the past few decades, in particular in the realm of study and scholarship. But previous inequalities and instances of maltreatment persist. And uh, we have not yet spoken candidly about the dignity of women in our tradition. Worse, each morning we actually reinforce the inherited prejudice that holds that women possess less innate dignity than men. So women are still extorted routinely during divorce proceedings. The rabbinical courts urge them to forfeit various rights in exchange for her husband deigning to give her a divorce. Simply for lack of male reproductive organs, otherwise qualified women are still barred from the rabbinate and from many positions of communal leadership. She can be a judge, but not a dayan. That's uh, uh, an advanced uh, decider of Jewish law. A brain surgeon, but not a posseg, uh, someone who rules on Jewish law. And often she must content herself with dubbing, in, that's praying, in a cage in shul from where her desire to say Kaddish for a parent may or may not be tolerated. This is no way to run a religion that claims wisdom as its inheritance. But every morning, the daily blessing, we unthinkingly mouth the philosophical justification for these demeaning, arbitrary, discriminatory practices. I cannot take are God's... You gonna how, long, how much of this are you going to read? Just one more paragraph. Okay. Can I cannot take God's name in the context of this blessing anymore. I suspect at this point in history that it constitutes the desecration of the name, God forbid, in time-honored rabbinic tradition, better to sit and not do. So I do say this blessing. I, I don't agree with the rabbi. Judaism has separate roles for men and women. So there are some things that women can do that men cannot do, and there are things that men can do that women cannot do. And so I believe that men and women have inherent differences. Both are equally in the image of God, and both in, innately should possess human dignity and worth and, and holiness, but they, they have different responsibilities. And, Orthodox Judaism recognizes this, it generally separates the sexes and it gives them different tasks. And I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with thanking God for making me a man. That's just another way of saying not having made me a woman. So Judaism holds that you should relish the task that you've been given in life, and I relish the task of, of being a man. So I don't agree with the rabbi. What do you think? I have a lot to say. You ready? Okay. Where okay. should I start? Anywhere you want. Uh, you, you know what? Bring bring it back up. No, just you can let this good thing go down because I'm gonna be talking for a bit. Okay, that's all good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. The first thing I want to say is, does everyone understand what's going on here with the with the bracha of uh, Shalos Asani Isha that you should, that thank God that you didn't make me a woman? Do you know why we say that, lady? Let's learn some Torah right now. Go ahead and tell me. Because a woman it doesn't have all 613 mitzvahs. Mm-hmm. We say a series of brachas every morning. We say Shalosani Goy, we thank God that he didn't make us a Gentile, and he made us a Jew. Shalos Asani Ovid, that he didn't make us a, a an indentured servant, right? And Shalosani Isha, that he didn't make us a woman. Why do we say these things? It's because we hate Goyim? 
because we hate women, because they're inferior to us, right? Is that why? Well, that's what he would have you think reading his, his, his little uh, rant there, right? His little crybaby apologetics, right? That's what you would have us think. So I am here. This is what our function is. It's to, it's to dispel, it's to f sift through the bullshit, right? And present light. The reason why we say, Shlomasani, these things, right, that God didn't make me these things, is because we're thanking God for the fact that we, as men, as Jewish men, have the most amount of mitzvahs. Right? How many mitzvahs are there, lady? 613. 613. How many does a goy have? If you're not Jewish, how many mitzvahs are there? Fundamentally, it's seven. Seven. So, Shlomasani, goy, because I'd rather have 16, 613. Thank you for giving me that opportunity, rather than only having seven. That is that is why we say that blessing for no other reason than that. Anyone who tells you difference is, is ignorant. That is why we say that blessing. Shlomasani Abed, because even if I was a Jew who was, in, but I was an indentured servant, it still wouldn't be as good as I have it now, because there's certain things that a servant is uh, not that, that uh, they are exempt. They're exempt from, and then they don't have to do certain mitzvahs. Right? Because they're an indentured servant, right? So thank you for not making me an indentured servant because then I wouldn't have the opportunity to do all 613. And finally, even if I was a free person and not an indentured servant and I was a Jew, I wouldn't be able to do all of the mitzvahs, for instance, to fill it. Because women are, if I was, a, if I was born a woman, because the women are, are putter for mitzvahs zman gramahu, right? Do you know what that means? It's fine. Time committed mitzvahs. Women have uh, anything that's time committed, which is most mitzvahs asit, which most positive commandments, a woman is exempt from. Did mm -hmm. you know that? Yeah. They're not exempt from any uh, negative commandments. If it says thou shall not do X, Y, Z, yeah. women are just as responsible for those as we are. But there's certain things that are positive commandments were like putting on tefillin or uh, davening three times a day or learning Torah women don't have to do right even though they're you know in the Torah that says to do these things women don't have to do them because women are putter are exempt from mitzvahs that require time positive mitzvahs that require a specific amount of time women can't do those things because they are Oisik, theoretically, they're occupied with something that's more important in that sense is raising their kids. That's really the reason. Okay, so mit, women are mit, uh, putter for mitzvahs zman karma. That is why men say, what is that all that about? Anything to do with this? Yeah, You're I'm, I'm making that some on, things I want to say. On, on anything I said so far? Yeah. Okay. That is what, did you follow what I'm saying though? So the re, why, what, let's review. What's the reason why us, why we say Shlosani Isha? Well, according to you, it's because... According to me? <laughs> it's according to the Torah. Okay, go ahead. What? I'm just quoting what it says. Go ahead. According to me, what? Well, first of all, there's the bracha, and then there are developments explaining why we say a bracha, but I'm sure there are also more than just reasons that we're going to give tonight. There, I'm sure there are a lot of different reasons for the bracha. No, there's not. This, it, you got it backwards. You're saying, like, this bracha came down from Shemayim, and then we had to establish reasons behind it. Like, you know, we just have, like, our own interpretations. You got it backwards. The, the Chachamim put, enacted these, these uh, brachas in this specific order because of this specificity of what I'm talking about. Shulosani Goy, that 613 rather than 7, right? Oh, Shalosani Abed, because even if I was Jewish, I'd still, and Shalosani Isha, it's like we're going in order of how many mitzvahs there are. Go ahead, just take it. Okay, so that's, that is why we say those things. When you get into all this apologetics because, oh, oh, I feel so bad about saying that, right? Oh, I don't like saying that. Then, then you're missing the whole point. Because that what you're basically saying is, I feel bad about the fact that God created me as a guy, and he gave me a penis, and he gave me, you know, a, whatever, a beard, and he said, here, go do the 613, and I'm like, don't, not comfortable with that. Then you should curse God and wish that you were created a woman. Because you're not happy with what God gave you. God created you with a dick, okay? And you're saying, I don't want a dick. I want to be a woman, right? And it, it's grotesque. 
and it shows a 